Today, we're excited to announce Langflow 1.4 is generally available. Langflow 1.4 comes with projects that can contain flows that you expose as tools over Model Context Protocol, or MCP, to enable AI agents to take actions on your behalf. Yes, we now can host MCP servers remotely on the internet. Let's walk through these features now. To do that, I'm going to run Langflow locally. So we're going to do Docker run. We're going to forward a port and then Langflow AI slash Langflow with the latest tag. This is going to pull down uh, Langflow and run it locally. Why are we running it locally? Well, that's because Langflow is open source. It's open source. It's free. You can run it locally uh, for free at no cost. You can self host it wherever you want. Um, and if you're wondering about how to host Langflow on the internet, um, we have content coming up about that where we teach you how to host Langflow on AWS or render.com, fly.io, or even just like a bare metal machine that you have. Um, subscribe below if you want to catch that one when it comes out. But for now, let's dive in. So Langflow is running and we're going to click this, open Langflow. And hey, welcome. This is Langflow 1.4. Feel free to drop a star on GitHub. Uh, but we're going to create our first flow. And here we're going to just go with a blank flow. And this created a project. And as we can see, projects are MCP servers. So this is our project. We have untitled document, which is a flow. And if we go to MCP server, we can see that that flow untitled project is an action. It's a tool. And we can access this in any MCP client using this JSON blob. Don't worry, we're going to do all that. But for now, let's just create a basic flow. So how we do that is we go to flows, we go to our flow, and let's just start adding stuff. So we need a chat input. We need a chat output, like any uh, flow, and we need an agent. So let's get all of these right here. Chat input, chat output, fantastic. Now, what do we want to make? Well, I'm really bad at emails. So I want maybe an agent that can access my Gmail, read my emails, tell me what's important. Um, and then maybe it has access to my calendar and can like schedule an event for me to respond to important emails and get to inbox here. I would love that actually. So let's, let's see if we can make that. Langflow integrates with Composio. Composio is a great way to authenticate with a variety of providers and then use let agents use those providers. So we're gonna type Gmail. Uh, it's in the Composio bundle. We're gonna add Gmail right here. And we're gonna maybe align these a little bit better. Okay. And then we're gonna add calendar as well from, for Google Calendar. Okay, and if we ever wanna see everything all at once, we just click this one. There we go. So it's now all nicely spaced out. And let's start connecting things. First of all, we need API keys. We need an OpenAI API key for the agent, and we need a Composio API key. I have those handy, but if you don't have them handy, you can go make accounts and find them yourself. So uh, let's get our API keys right now. So our Composio API key, I'm just gonna paste it. And my OpenAI API key, I'm gonna paste that one as well. Just like that. So now we wire things up. Chat input goes here, response goes to chat output. For our Composio things, they need to authenticate as us. So that's why the API key is important. And Langflow allows you to use any component you want as a tool with an agent. And, and we can do that by turning on tool mode. So we're going to go here and turn on literally tool mode. And uh, it becomes a tool. And we can just use the tool. Uh, we'll turn on tool mode here as well. And it's now a tool. And so our agent can use it. There we go. So that's it. We have our agent. Let's take it for a spin. Uh, so let's go here to playground and I'm going to send a prompt. I'm going to just say hi, just to make sure everything works. Um, let's take a look. Perfect. Everything's wired up. GPD is responding. We're all happy. Um, we can enable actions with different Composio integrations. For example, the Gmail integration, I can say I want you to do only these things in Gmail. The calendar integration, I can say I want you to do these things with Calendar. Let's take a look at that. So if we come here, we can see actions. These are all the things we can do in Gmail. So what, what should we be able to do? Well, I do want to get my emails. I want to get an email by ID, maybe by thread ID, but I think that's it. I don't want to send an email actually. Um, then let's go to Calendar and do a similar thing. So we're just going to adjust and we're going to select actions. I want you to be able to create an event, to find free slots, to find events, to fetch my calendar, to get the current date and time. I don't, yeah, you can list my calendars. And finally, to be able to quick add an event. I want you to have these capabilities. Okay. So now we've got these beefy um, tools. Let's use this. So I'm going to send a prompt. That is literally what I want. Um, I would like to respond to important emails. Please find important unread emails in my inbox and summarize them here. Leave out details 
because people are watching. Then find a free slot this week, uh, May 6, 2025, just in case, in my calendar that would be ideal to respond to all important emails and create a calendar event to get to inbox zero. Okay, that's a decent prompt. I think that's pretty all right. This is kind of exactly what I want. And so now let's send this and watch the magic. So we send this prompt. And again, this is all running locally on localhost. So it got my input and it's finding free slots in my calendar. That's awesome. And uh, once it finds free slots, it's probably going to make an event. Okay, what's the best? The cool thing about AI is you don't need to think in algorithms anymore. You can just say, what's the best slot? And it will compute what best slot means. Is it one with few meetings? Is it one with no meetings? Is it um, perhaps a day where you have more, if it's connected to your Fitbit, like a day where your health markers are better? I don't know. But the this is something that the AI can discover. Once it does that, it's going to use other, oh, wow, it's done already. Um, let's take a look. I found some important unread emails. Something about um, a Jira ticket, of course. Employee review, this is correct. Performance reviews and... Um, uh, Amazon shareholder letter. That's a great read. So great. And it says, I've scheduled a time for you to respond to these emails and achieve inbox zero. It's set for May 7th, 2025. And you can view the event here. Let's go take a look at my calendar and we'll go to today. Well, of course, we don't want to see today. We want to see this week. And here we go right there. This is brand new. Respond to important emails uh, May 7th as promised. And it's given me an hour and a half to do it. Um, pretty nifty. But now how do I use this with an MCP um, client like Claude desktop or um, cursor. Let's take a look. So um, first of all, let's clean up my calendar. I don't want to do that. Uh, but now that this exists, let's go give this a name. So we're going to edit details and we'll call this, I don't know, Google Assistant. Um, and if we go to my projects, we have Google Assistant now. How cool is that? Um, well, let's and actually, let's go also edit the description because this is going to be important for the LLM to infer. Um, manage Google Gmail and Google Calendar. And this helps the clients know what to do. So now we have this MCP server. Let's go add it. Let's start um, by adding it to Cloud Desktop, which is right here. So we're going to go to Settings, Developer, edit the config, and we're going to just add the config. So I have my Astra DB server here already. I'm going to paste um, the MCP server information. So we'll just copy this one, LF my project. It's called my projects because that's the fold of the project name. But let's do this just like that. And because this is HTTP OOO, when you host it, it can be HTTP like your site.com. So awesome. Okay. So now we've given Claude these capabilities. Let's go and restart it. So I'm going to quit Claude. We're going to open Claude again. And now we should have some MCP. Let's take a look. Here we go. I left my project. Ooh, and we have Google Assistant. And that's kind of it. So now let's ask, um, tell me more about this um, Jira email. And uh, let's see what happens. The cool thing, again, I'd be happy to understand your Jira email, but I don't have access to it. If you'd like me to forward through it, I can handle it. Yeah, we'll do it then use my Gmail. And the, the cool thing about AI is here we go. So there we go. So it's asking for permission and we allow always, um, let's continue looking at, here we go. I found several Jira emails in your Gmail account. Here's the details of the most recent one. Ash Hopkins mentioned me in something. So it's totally working, um, which is kind of the point. Very cool. My assistant can now read my emails over Langflow and this is not just on this device running localhost. If I deploy this Langflow, subscribe for that video, anything can use it. Let's finally look at vibe coding with cursor and wrap up. So again, I'm going to take this MCP server. This is cursor. Um, and I've got a bunch of stuff here, but let's um, open cursor settings, full settings, and we'll go to MCP. We'll add a new server. We'll just paste it right there. Save. And now look at this. We've got LF my projects. And we're good to go. It says no tools available, but I think it just needs to 
refresh. There we go, Google Assistant. And so now let's pretend I'm vibe coding. I'm working on a readme or I'm working on a big MIT license. And I'm like, hey, um, anything important, important in my inbox? Or can I lock in? Um, and I'm just continuing to vibe code away. And, and so let's go, maybe we do some Docker file and we're like, ack, whatever. Um, sure. Um, and I'm just like totally vibe coding here. You know, maybe I'm writing some caddy file. Oh, let's do Docker Compose. Why not? Let's add Postgres. Uh, this is total serious vibe coding stuff. Very important. Um, Postgres is on port 5432 by default. That's great. What else should we add? Let's add an, a monitoring. Yeah, let's, no, not Redis. Let's do um, Grafana. Okay, so, but like, so I'm vibe coding here and it's also given me, it looks like there are a few potentially important emails. So should I continue coding or interrupt my workflow? Um, and it's based on those emails, it might be a good idea to pause your coding workflow. So it's my like assistant in place over MCP, all driven from Langflow 1.4. I hope this captures some of the value and we can't wait to see what you think. If, we'd love to hear from you. In fact, join our Discord. There's links down below under the like button. Follow us on social media on X, comment on the video, and we'd love to build this together with you as the future of developer tooling. Thanks for sticking around and we'll catch you in the next one.